Good Saturday morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyrie Stewart. I'm at mile marker 89 on I-64 East and if you look right behind me, you can see that state police are still on the scene of the shooting. We learned that Pavlis escaped through a loading dock here at the rear of the jail and under a fence. Now this is an area that's surrounded by several homes as you can see. This is not the powdery snow that we showed you earlier. This snow is actually really hard. One person was taken to the hospital after a logging truck overturned, spilling dozens of logs into the road. The tornado may have brought down homes and trees like this one, but it did not bring down the spirit of the community. Oh, I love fall. Me pumpkin too. spice, all of that. I'm like oh, counting yeah. down the days for that. I had my first pumpkin spice the other day. Oh, I'm yes. behind. They said their main concern tonight is the Jackson River. They're expecting it to reach record flood stage around 23 feet. Now police are going door to door telling people to get to higher ground. Several roads around Cummington and Allegheny County have been blocked due to high water. Crews conducted a swift water rescue at Midland Trail and Callahan Circle in Allegheny County. Many people said this is something they've never seen before. It's been hectic. And I'm joined here with Richard Douglas, who is the Cummington City Manager. Mr. Douglas, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Now, where are evacuees being asked to go and what should they bring? There's outrage in Tazewell County right now after what happened during school lunch on Thursday. According to the school superintendent, more than a dozen students who had outstanding unpaid lunch charge balances at Richlands High School were told to leave their trays at a cash register. And it may be one of the most important tests a high school student will have to take. But this year, big changes are coming to the SATs. Cute. She was a pit boxer mix. Are you singing? <laughs> that? Ooh, Ever that was since really good. Brought her on. I've been thinking about that song. I know. I know. And she was like, quoting a bunch of different Adele songs in it too. She's yeah. like, we, she needs to find someone like you. What else? Did rumor she say? has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Rumor oh gosh. Has it. I'm Adele? an Adele fan, guys. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, Adele is so so good, and I'm, I think we're all really excited. She's back. Uh, making some singles and, and making it, some hits. Yeah, and it looks like the weather could fit in Adele's song too, right? I probably could, yeah. All our gear and things are up there waiting on us. Um, and if you can, you see this, post it to other people. This video of Ricky Chittum calling for people to bring their cars and firearms to Kelly's Pier on Lake Muma was posted to Facebook Saturday afternoon. It now has nearly 50,000 views and more than 1,000 shares. Less than 24 hours after it was posted, Chittum would lead police on a standoff at the lake. We uh, heard some shooting and we walked out and there was a guy standing on our intake tower bridge. Sunday morning, police said they got a call that Chittum was walking around with an AR-15 assault rifle and body armor. He was planning on trying to protect the dam uh, from uh, ISIS or outside forces. Uh, he was worried that they were going to attack the dam, so he was sitting here protecting it by with his flags. One of his flags had the initials ACE. It stands for Appalachian Christian Elite, which is a group Chittum said God anointed him to create. He recently revealed to me that I was supposed to be a general of an army for Christ. We're called ACE, Appalachian Christian Elite. Allegheny County Sheriff Kevin Hall said it took nearly three hours of negotiations with Chittum before he surrendered peacefully. Once he knew that they weren't going to move and the armored car was going to be at the end of that bridge and he had nowhere to go. It was time to, to give up. Chittum is facing charges for felony assault on an officer and brandishing a firearm. Deputies said he will also undergo a psychological evaluation. He's currently being held at the Allegheny Regional Jail. It's a peaceful ending to something that could have ended a lot worse. Oh, it's, it's a scary situation, that's for sure. I mean, it's, it's not something I want, would have to, want anybody else to have to go through. So. In Allegheny County, Kyrie Stewart, WDBJ7. That's right, Melissa, and he told me he's still upset and that he doesn't believe the results. He still thinks there should be justice for Spencer's death. Like, we was already prepared for, already prepared for nothing to happen, like no justice at all, like they weren't going to do nothing. Carl Spencer is surprised the officers involved in the shooting death of his brother, Keontae Spencer, will not be charged. Police say he refused to put down a BB gun he was holding. No matter how wrong he was, he did now, which was not supposed to happen. Like, they're wrong. They killed him. He don't have no story to tell of what really happened. On Wednesday, Chief Howard Hall said Spencer turned the officers six times and was attempting to point a gun at them. His brother said he still has questions. What they were saying in the first press conference that the subject, which is my brother, was struck right after turning around. Like immediately after he turned. So when did he have time to raise the gun up 
And when did he turn around six times? And he wants an independent investigation. They shouldn't have had nothing to do with this case because the police was involved in killing my brother. So the police that in that jurisdiction, whatever you call it, they shouldn't have nothing to do with it. Either way, he says no matter what happens, nothing can bring back his brother. It's just not right, man. Like, I, I still think about it every day. I probably will think about it every day for the rest of my life. Now, Spencer said that he's planning to write a song about his brother, and you can read more about today's announcement and reaction on WDBJ7.com. Kyrie Stewart, WDBJ7. To see it on TV is one thing, but actually to come out here and experience it is a whole different ball game. Joshua Polk and Travis Smith sift through the rubble of what used to be a home. They're trying to salvage whatever they can for the family that lived here. Both say they can't help but be touched by the stories they see in the piles of debris. Uh, when we drove by, we actually saw a large teddy bear um, that you can tell belonged to a small girl uh, just laying under a whole bunch of a whole bunch of debris. Pictures, doll babies, like tools. We found a few trophies like stuff that holds memory. And I think the people out here, I think they really wanted just to get it back. Power crews were also out working to restore power to the area. While volunteers are out lending aid to the victims, others are out lending aid to the volunteers. And now we get a chance to help our, our friends and our neighbors right here in our community. It, it, it means so much to be able to do that. Members of the humanitarian group Gleaning for the World were out making sure volunteers and victims had enough supplies. Today we brought 2,500 bottles of water up here for volunteers. Uh, we've sent uh, 25,000 uh, out to other places that have been affected as well as more food and uh, water and blankets and things like that. Folk and Smith said they plan to come back tomorrow. They said this tragedy has taught them the importance of life and helping others. Community needs to come together. People need to, uh, you know, band together and try to help one another. Um, that, that's something that's going to be real important in these next couple of days. Even since I was a kid, I can remember, you know, people speeding up and down the road. Nothing's really ever deterred them. Soon that could change. Daniel Clare has lived on Metal Arc Road for more than five years and says he's fed up with speeders. Clare says he's concerned about people who walk and run along the road. See someone that's, you know, that's obviously going 40 or something like that and, then, and they're eating something. I've, I've seen people eat cereal, be on the cell phone at the same time and drive. And they got a kid in the back. Sometimes worrying when I hear a car coming up from behind me really fast and I can't really tell whether it's like right next to me or not. 3,600 block, they're coming from up there. From On Tuesday, a meeting was held at Cave Spring Middle School for those residents to discuss a possible solution to the problem. The county wants to install these signs and invoke $200 fines for people going over the 25 mile per hour speed limit. This is citizen driven. We've had the, the interest and the support and the, some of the legwork from the citizens as well. David Holliday is the planning administrator for the county. He says there's been an increased police presence on the roads, but this is another road bump. It's a step in the right direction. It's a deterrent, we hope. We'll have to evaluate as we go along. That's the bottom line is citizen interest and, and public safety. Either way, Claire and others who frequent this road hope the signs work and get the message across the speeders. Slow down, you know, slow down and be aware of what you're doing.